Hi, here I am again. We're going to be starting work on the neck of the collar, but we're starting first with those two extra pieces that need to be made at the end here before we can make the neck edge. So you only need a little bit of thread on your shuttle attached continuously to your ball. Uh, we're only making two rings with this, and the, what's on the shuttle, the rest is coming from the ball. When we'll be working on the neck edge, on the border around the neck, it's going to be important to identify the center ring of your medallion. So if you're looking at it vertically like this, put a pin or something to identify the ring that looks to you like it's the center of your medallion. We're going to join on that first free small ring by just passing the shuttle through a loop. And we're making a ring of seven picots separated by two stitches. The first three picots are free. So two stitches, a pico, two stitches, a pico two stitches and a third picot, and two stitches. And now we're going to join to the second picot of the last large ring. Like this, and we're making three more picots, three more picots separated by two stitches. So half stitch to finish the join, complete the join, another stitch, a pico, two stitches, a pico, two stitches, a third pico, and two stitches. Like this. And I am going to join back into the pico with my shuttle thread. I just think it sits better on the pico. Just like this. It's a lock join with the shuttle thread. All right, we're ready to start the chain and in that chain I will insert a magic loop so I can hide my ends or one of my ends. So the chain has um, the chain has five picots separated by two stitches. So I'm going to make the first two picots, then insert my magic loop. So that's two picots. I'm going to insert a magic loop with the knot facing left, place it behind the work. And I'm ready to make the next picot. So that's three picots. Four. And the fifth pico. And one more stitch to complete the chain. So this penultimate one not too tight. Pull my magic loop out a bit, fold it behind and do the last half stitch. And we're going to skip one ring and join to the next. And, and now I'm going to insert a magic loop at the beginning of the next chain, which is a chain of eight stitches. I'm doing the first half stitch and inserting my magic loop with the knot facing right. Of course, if you're not using magic loops, that's fine. You can just sew your ends at the end with a needle. So that's one stitch. Two, three, 
three, four, five. I think that's enough five stitches. I'm gonna pull it out a bit and fold it back and complete the chain. Six, seven, eight stitches. And you want to count your rings because I'm going to skip one ring and join to the next. And then I should have two free rings left before the last one where I want to join before the center pico we've identified, the center ring we've identified. If you don't have that exact number, you can just adjust, adjust um, somewhere by not skipping, not skipping two rings here or joining two rings together if you have too many which might happen depending on where your joins were on the, when you join your medallions together. But ideally, you skip one ring from the start here, do the ring, skip one ring attached to the next, skip one ring attached to the next, and then skip two rings, because this one's going to be longer. We're making another chain of eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there is a ring at the end of this chain. So we're gonna reverse work to make the ring. And I will use reverse order stitches so that they look the same from the front. That's not, you don't have to do that either. You can just continue with um, traditional tatting. So start with the first half as normal. I'm gonna start with the second half and do them in reverse order. So that's one. So it's just a small ring, sorry, it's a small ring of three picots separated by two stitches. So I've made two stitches, a pico, two more stitches, and we're going to join here in the ring just before this one we've identified with a pin. So we've skipped two and joined to the next. Pin's getting in the way. That's one, two stitches and a pico, and two stitches. Oh dear, there's some building work going on next door. I don't know if you can hear that in the video. Now we're gonna stay on this side because we are going to chain back. I'm gonna do a shoelace trick here, just so my threads are in the right place. Like this. And we're working on the back again. So if you want your front stitches to look all the same, you can do reverse order stitches, which is what I'm going to do on those chains. And now we're making chains of five picots separated by two stitches. So I'm starting with the second half because I'm on the back. Two, pico, two stitches, a pico, two stitches, a pico, two stitches, a fourth pico, two stitches, fifth pico and two stitches to complete the chain and we're joining in between the two chains of the previous round and we're repeating the chain the same chain again so one two stitches a pico two stitches Two picots, two stitches, three picots, two stitches, four, two stitches, sorry, the fifth pico, and two more stitches, five. And we're joining 
in between the chains of the previous realm. Just making sure my um, magic loops are not in the way. Spread them apart. If you can't see where to join, it'll open up a little gap between the chains. And that's it. That's the small extra piece made. Now, I could have made more modifications to avoid having to add this extra piece. But the extra piece is in the original pattern. And I was trying, you know, I am trying as much as possible to stay close to the original. So I don't make too many changes because I want it to really look like the original. So now I'm just going to make a square knot and hide my ends with my magic loops. One on this side, pass it through. And pull, so that's one. And on the other side, pass the end through. Start pulling, make sure it's grabbed. And then open the other end and pull. Just a little bit and cut the ends close to the work. So that's one side done. And now I'm going to do the other side, repeating on the other side. I'm going to get rid of that little bit of thread and wind a bit more on my bobbin. I'm going to untwist it. So now we're looking at the back of the work. I'm starting on the back because it's on the other side. I'm joining in the last small ring. And as I've done on the other side, just so the front, they look all the same, I'm going to do reverse order stitches for that first ring because we're, we're on the back of the work at the moment. So two stitches, a pico. Two stitches, a pico. Two stitches, a pico, and two stitches, and we're joining in the second pico of the last large ring, and we're making three more picots separated by two stitches. One pico, two. And close the ring. And like I did on the other side, I am going to join, do a lock join with my shuttle thread into the pico. Ready to start the ring. And we're on the back of the work again, so I'm still going to use reverse order stitches for that. Did I say ring? For the chain. And because we're on the back of the work again, I'm going to do reverse order stitches. And it's five picots separated by two stitches. So that's two stitches, a picot, two stitches. Pico and two stitches and I'm going to insert my magic loop so the first one with the knot facing left so I'm doing now the third pico 
I'm still working with reverse order stitches, so a second half followed by a first half instead of the other way around. Third picot. And one more stitch. Fourth picot. One more stitch. And the fifth picot. And one more stitch to complete the chain. And so I'm doing the first half stitch not too tight and pull my magic loop out of the way and do the final half stitch. And we're gonna miss one ring and join to the next. And next we're doing a chain of eight stitches and I'm continuing with my reverse order stitches. So I'm doing the first half stitch, not too tight, and then place my magic loop with the knot facing right. And I'm gonna continue with my eight stitches. So that's one, two, Five. I think that's enough. I'll move it out of the way and complete my chain. Six, seven, eight. Skip one ring. Oh yes, on this side, let me just identify the center pico. I think it's this one. These two. On this side, I actually have more rings than I had on the other. And I'm going to join these two together. So you might have the same problem. If you have too many rings, you can join two together like this. You can see they're practically on top of each other anyway. So I'm going to join these two and I'll have two more and join here. So that's my center ring and I want to join finish this little bit of chains or this little extra part we're adding. I'm going to join here just before the center ring. So skip one ring and I'm going to join to these two together. Sometimes you have to improvise a little bit like this and then another eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're reversing work to make the little ring that's at the end of this chain. Now again, I could have modified that and taken away this little ring, but it was in the original pattern just here. And I decided to stay as close as possible, as close as I could to the original really. So I've kept the little ring. So it's three picots separated by two stitches. One. Oh, and now we're facing front. So I'm doing the stitches in the right order again. First half followed by second half. So two stitches, one picot, two stitches and skip two rings joined to the next, which is the ring that's just before our center ring. complete the little ring. So two more stitches, a picot and two more stitches. Close the ring and we're not reversing work because we're going to go back in the opposite direction. I'm going to do the shoelace trick
so that my thread is in the right place. Now we're ready to make the chain. It has it has five picots separated by two stitches. One, two, and I'm gonna have to fix that because I don't have a lot of thread and it's too loose and it's just falling off my bobbin. I really only put just enough on there. I could have been a little bit more generous. So two picots, two stitches, three, four, and five, and two more stitches to complete the chain. And we're joining between the two chains of the previous row. Like that. Moving my magic loops out of the way. And we're repeating the same chain again. Two, sorry, five picots separated by two stitches. And now we're working from the front of the work, so just regular stitches. Two picots. Three, four, five, and we're joining back between the chains of the previous round. Now we can cut the threads. I'm gonna go on the back. Actually, I realize now I should have, when I said place your magic loops behind, I should have put them on top because I was working from the back. So they're now on the front, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna tie here and hide them. Of course, as I said before, if you don't use magic loops, you can just sew your ends in. First one on this side, pass my thread through it, pull, open the loop, and pull through. So that's one, and the other one on the other side. Pass through, pull a little till it grabs it. And then open it and pull. There. Make sure they're nice and snug in there and cut close to the work. There are two added pieces are done. So that's what they look like. I think it makes a nice finished edge. I hope you'll agree. And now we're ready to make the two rounds that go around the neckline. I shall show you that in the next video. I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.